In a moment, in answer to a great many requests, we'll present a film of a fine performance by James Dean in a General Electric Theater play. It was a performance that helped attract nationwide attention to his talent, and we present it as one of the landmarks in his progress toward the great roles of his brief career. Those of us who worked with Jimmy Dean carry an image of his intense struggle for a goal beyond himself. And curiously enough, that's the story of the boy he portrays tonight. Eddie Albert is the narrator, Natalie Wood the girl, in Sherwood Anderson's I'm a Fool. It was a hard jolt for me, one of the most bitterest I ever had to face. And it, and it came about to my own foolishness, too. Even now, when I... Let's see, what am I? 20 years older. Yeah, and still hanging around racetracks and horses. Well, never mind about that. Anyway, what are they saying? Even now, when I think about it, I, I want to cry swear or kick myself. It all started one day in July. There I was, 19 years old, too big to hang around the house, and there was no job in town I could get. So I made up my mind to try for a bigger town. I knew if I was ever going to amount to anything, I just had to get out of there. There was always to it. Well, my sister Mildred, she stormed and scolded all that week before I left. My mother cried. I don't know why he can't stay here where everybody knows him. Oh, please. If your father was alive... If... Come on, don't cry. I'm not, I'm not crying. Mildred, make her stop crying. Better eat now, you hear? Yeah, I'm okay. You have to have a hot meal every single day. And you better write, too. Okay, Ma, will. Better write me every single day what yes, you have to eat. I will. You promise? Oh, Ma, I promise. He won't write. I will so. Ma, I'll write you every single day. Honest, I will. And remember one thing. Yes, Mom. Clothes make the man. Put up a good front, the world is yours. Oh, Ma, I'm going to remember that. I really am. Well. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Mildred. <sighs> Wait a minute. You better take this. But be careful how you spend it. Well, I don't think I'm going to need it, Mildred, honestly. Well, I, I don't want to have to worry all night if you got something to eat. Son. Yes? Just promise me one thing. Just promise me you won't get mixed up in no way with no sneaky people. Oh, Ma. Ma, no. I will. <laughs> sure, I promised. Didn't I? I've got to go. It's getting dark. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, son. There are a lot of things you got to promise your mother when you go away. And a lot of things you got to keep from telling her, too. Like, I knew if I told her where I was going, she'd worry from now till next Christmas, maybe even longer. Because I knew the first place I was going to go to the minute I got to Sandusky was to the racetrack. You know about him to go fooling around here? Well, I, I didn't do nothing. I was just, I just walking. That's, that's all. a good way to get yourself shot, boy. Well, I just got in town. I was looking for work. I thought maybe I could this find. This time something. of night. I, I just got off the train there. Well, you better get out of here. I can tell you that right now. I didn't mean nothing. Honest, I didn't. I just, I just wondered maybe if I could, I might. Get all out. right. What kind of work you looking for? I want to be a swipe. You know anything about horses? Well, sure. What? Oh, well, they, uh, sometimes, well, well <laughs> I don't know, they... How do you expect to get yourself a job around horses if you don't know nothing about them? Well, I guess I don't know too much about them, but, uh, oh. Well, I like horses. In fact, I, I, I really love them. And I just figured if I could get some work, I thought, then I could learn. I could learn right offhand that I could... Well, what I... What I thought was that uh, maybe you could help me. Maybe you could tell me where I could find some. Yeah, you don't look none too strong, and that's the truth. 
You can't be too bright or you'd never want to be a swipe in the first place. Now, tell me, you uh, know what a swipe does? He just uh, uh, cleans things up and, uh, well, just helps around and all that sort of thing, I guess. Guess you don't even have a place to sleep tonight, do you? Well, I, see, I figured that I'd just kind of, you know... <laughs> kind of what? Oh, uh... You know, I can just sleep uh, just about any place. I can. <laughs> I don't even care. Now, I was going to sleep in them grandstands over there. On them hard boards? Why, well, you're the craziest boy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> now, look at that. All this puffin's got a nervous. I told you, you got to keep it quiet around horses, boy. They got nerves like a young girl. Didn't I tell you that? Well, yeah. Well, no. Well, no, you didn't tell me nothing. Well, I should have. Go on. Go on in there and get some sleep on that. Hey, I got to tell you everything. Now, we get up early in the morning around here, and I don't want to have nobody poking around all day with his eyes half closed. Well, go on, boy, if you're going. Uh, thanks. Thanks an awful lot. Hey, boy. Yes, sir. You can call me Bert. You know, sometimes I think that boys who was brought up regular, you know, at houses, and never had a fine friend like Burke, well, they go to high schools and colleges, that's true, but, but they've never come walking down in front of a grandstand, you know what I mean? Oh, what's the use of talking? Such fellas just don't know nothing at all. Well, of course, they had no opportunity. You know. I did. Old Burke got me a job and everything. I guess he kind of liked me. I don't know why. Well... Never mind that. Anyway, I had this job, and that was fine, and uh, I spent all my spare time with Bert, and he taught me lots of things. But the best of all was the times that Bert and me would hitch up a horse to a cart, you know, and we'd go riding out in the country slow and steady like, oh, that was fun, fun. Just, just riding along and singing, you know. But one day, I guess it was October, we was riding along like we always did, and I seen this girl. I guess that was about the beginning of my downfall. <laughs> here, here, let me see catch it. Don't let me get it. Yeah, that's right. I catch it. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you haven't ruined your trousers. No, you couldn't ruin them, but you old. <laughs> oh, well, here's something. No. Nah. Well, I better get on back, because uh, uh, if I don't, I'll have to, to walk back to town. Thank you again. <laughs> yeah, keep it up, boy. You're going to break your fool neck. Oh, my darling, that'll be great. <laughs> What? What'd you say? What kind of way is that to ride a cart? You're riding, sit up and ride right. You're going to stare your eyes out, get off the cart and stare. I bet they're just about my age, too. Fancy clothes are playing ball in, for heaven's sake. Keep it up, boy. You're just asking for trouble. <laughs> I bet that's kind of go to college and all. Hmm. Sure don't seem stuck on themselves, though. You know that? Yeah, I've seen many a boy get himself burned on that candle. Gets around a racetrack, wins himself a dollar or two, and... First thing you know, he's trying to be two or three other things. You better learn this, boy. You are what you are, and they are what they are. <laughs> the look on your face when you've seen that girl. <laughs> you should have seen it, boy. <laughs> Bert, I don't want you to call me boy no more. Oh, 